Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Botanica 2020. Today's presentation is a team effort, as I am Sophie Gatfosemwaho's daughter, Segoren, and I will be the one going through this presentation. Sophie, my mother, is the president of the Gatfosem Foundation, and I oversee its management. She is sitting next to me and will be able to respond to your questions in the, in the chat room after this talk. For both of us, it is an honor to open this Congress and we thank you, Rhiannon, for this opportunity. An opportunity to look back at the history of modern aromatherapy, which started with my great-grandfather, René-Maurice Gatfossé, in the early 90s. Today, as René-Maurice granddaughter and great-granddaughter, we will introduce you to the man, researcher, industrialist and chemist who developed the use of essential oils for therapeutic purposes, but also to René Maurice, the historian and philosopher. This presentation features original new material. The photographs you will see were taken by René Maurice and have been kept in the family archives. Before we start, I'd like to remind you that René Maurice's life story unfolds between 19 and 1950, which was a difficult period in French history that encompassed two world wars, the 1929 economic crash and several epidemics. Yet, it was also a time of immense technological progress in every field imaginable. The battle against infectious diseases enabled medical science to discover drugs that have eradicated epidemics to this day. René Maurice's story begins in Lyon, France, in the year 1881. He grew up in an extremely inspiring environment alongside all the great progressives of his home city, such as the Lumière brothers, who invented the motion picture system, Marius Bernier, who went on to construct thousands of cars and trucks, Marcel Merieux, who continued Louis Pasteur's work countering diphtheria, typhoid and tuberculosis, and a vibrant chemistry scene that was developed not far from Lyon. The Gatfosé family business was modest in size, but René Maurice was blessed with the gift of foresight, as well as connections with all of Lyon's industrial sectors. He believed in cooperation as a way of solving social and economic problems. He was thus involved with several associations working to support the industrial development of Lyon and the vocational training of young people. With his brother Abel, he inherited the family business from his father Louis Gatfossé, who had concentrated his activities on distributing perfumery ingredients. In 1908, René Maurice took the reins and developed the company, which went on to become an industrial plant producing essential oils and perfumes. He also developed new products as an inspired and creative formulator. In 1906, he put his research to use by writing a practical handbook and formula guide for the modern perfumer, which attested to the wide variety of products he had created. The guide was a great success and put the business on course to achieve genuine scientific renown. René Maurice was a real businessman. He organized many exhibitions to promote and expand the business, which received many prizes as demonstrated in these pictures. At the age of 25, René Maurice got his car and he headed to Haute-Provence to meet the lavender growers who produced one of perfume making's most important essential oils. Upon witnessing the region's poverty, he was moved by these local growers' deplorable living conditions and their archaic alambics. He resolved to help them and went on to devote his time to developing the lavender industry. René Maurice's visionary outlook encompassed every aspect of the business. He patented 
technical systems that would improve and modernize alembics, planted acres of lavender, set up selected nurseries, and funded a lavender growers union. René Maurice organized the entire lavender industry from the pickers to the perfumers. After just a few years, it, he was pleased to observe a sharp increase in yields and essential oil harvests. At last, French lavender essential oil had gained the recognition he felt it deserved. He spent long periods of time in southern, southern France, arid plains, organizing the industry, taking the time to enthusiastically absorb the traditional knowledge of these local growers who taught him about the medical properties of lavender. René Maurice did not just work to further his business economically, he worked in the interests of the lavender growers too. He was entirely and passionately dedicated to reinvigorating the industry with scientific progress as one of his constant concerns. The market value of lavender rose threefold during this period. Brimming with enthusiasm for his profession, René Maurice disseminated and shared his discoveries, research and new technology by founding the first magazine dedicated to French perfume making entitled La Parfumerie Moderne or modern perfumery. It was published until the late 1960s and is now available on the Université de Paris 5 website. It served as a real mouthpiece for the Gatoussé business and it gave René Maurice an opportunity to write several articles about lavender among other subjects. It was a real example of marketing channeled through technical and scientific communication. René Maurice continued his endeavors as a chemist, analyzing essential oils chemical composition to enhance their quality. On July 25, 1910, while working in his laboratory, he was splashed with boiling essence from a round-bottomed flask that had exploded and burst into flames. His head and both hands were very badly burned, but Contrary to the stories you might read online, he did not have a vat of lavender essential oil beside him in which he plunged his hands. In fact, he jumped out of the window and rolled on the grass to put out the fire that was engulfing him, leaving him with first degree burns. In René Maurice's day, burns were treated with oil rich tulgra dressings. When his wound started to give off a gangrenous odor, he remembered that the lavender growers had told him that burns could be healed with lavender essential oil. He took off his bandages and coated his skin with lavender oil. The results were outstanding. Two days later, his fever eased and his infection disappeared while his wounds healed relatively quickly without a trace. He was literally saved from a potentially fatal case of gangrene. This personal experience confirmed the hypothesis that lavender essential oil had wonderful antiseptic and healing properties. Profoundly changed by this experience, René Maurice embarked upon a new mission, to convince the medical world that this therapy was truly effective. He dedicated much of his time to studying the beneficial chemical properties of lavender essential oil, naturally developing an interest in lots of other essential oils along the way. He then embarked on a series of experiments in hospitals, first military and later civilian. In the course of his research into formulas, René Maurice observed that unprocessed oils were difficult to handle, inconsistent in quality, and hard to preserve. To create a pure, stable product, René Maurice turned to deterpination, a process for removing terpenes. He knew from his chemical analysis that essential oils have a low aromatic content, 
in components such as alcohol, ether, aldehyde, and so on. As they are diluted in high quantities of hydrocarbons, which he believed were largely worthless. With this in mind, he developed detepanated oils that were soluble in water or alcohol, making them easier to use in the formulations he had created for medical application. The military surgeon Dr. Fogg's assessment of the results was conclusive. Detepanated concentrated water-soluble essential oils are precious, their antiseptic qualities are highly effective, especially during emergency surgery and as part of the fight against epidemic disease in times of war. A second experience in 1915 set René-Maurice firmly on his path towards developing aromatherapy. His elder brother, Abel, also worked for the family business and the two were very close. When Abel died of an infectious disease during the First World War, a devastated, René Maurice decided to dedicate himself to perfecting an aromatic antiseptic product he dubbed Salvol. When Spanish flu started ravaging the population in 1918, he was certain he could save lives. To highlight the potential of his aromatic blend, René Maurice published a study on the antibacterial efficiency of essential oils on staphylococcal organisms in La Parfumerie Moderne. It proved that detepanated lavender and rosemary essential oils and salvol killed staphylococcal bacteria within an hour of application. Several military and civilian hospitals in France and abroad went on to use them successfully. But René Maurice did not want Salvol to become a commercial product. He believed it was something developed for the common good that belonged to everyone. He thus shared its manufacturing process with anyone who asked. In 1918, his younger brother, Robert, also died from infection. The years that followed were tough, yet they further reinforced René Maurice's conviction that essential oils offered a new way of caring for and curing patients. René Maurice wrote clinical notes in several of Lyon's hospitals monitoring patients' progress when they had responded positively to essential oils. Reading them, we see how the prescription tended to be similar even when the afflictions were varied. René Maurice wrote about one 35-year-old woman who presented at hospital with terrible bites on her hands and right breast. Her wounds had become gangrenous and foul-smelling. The doctor initially suggested amputating her breast and hands, but finally she was offered misogatosis treatment. This involved frequent cleansing with salvol, the application of a sulfanomine cream, moist salvol dressings, and the use of one of his epirom creams around the edges of the wounds. The gangrene soon disappeared, and once the injuries were free from infection, they were sprayed with lavender essential oil. The treatment lasted two months, after which the patient emerged fully cured. In the 1920s and 1930s, René Maurice's experiments gradually won greater recognition. He communicated about the psychological effects of his aromatic solutions, publishing four pamphlets about lavender therapeutic applications. He made antiseptic soaps and creams, as well as a new batch of salvol, which became widely used to disinfect not only hospitals, but also processing plants, barracks, schools, movie theaters, railroad systems, and so on. Bolstered by a wealth of feedback, René Maurice wrote a definitive account of his work in a book he entitled Aromatherapy in 1937. A year later, a second book completed the series, Antiseptique Essentielle, detailed the antibacterial and antimicrobial properties of essential oils and described the complexities involved in processing them. The two works thus formed a compendium of 30 years of research and study. 
René Maurice loved sharing his knowledge and wrote more than 30 scientific and technical books, as well as countless articles. As well as serving as a company director, he was editor-in-chief at La Parfumerie Moderne and wrote many of its articles. He also republished his perfumer chemists and soap makers formula guide, this time including 360 illustrated pages and plates describing numerous technical innovations. René Maurice Gatfusé had an astonishingly open mind and dedicated work ethic. He juggled a very diverse set of interests all at once. He continued to develop the Gatfusé company by creating a range of hugely successful veterinary products rich in essential oils before later turning his attention to dermatology. He treated all kinds of skin diseases using his new Accurous Continuous Face Emulsion Excipients. He also developed and manufactured cosmetics, hair care products, scented necklace, and a whole variety of lotions. His passion for essential oils took him to North Africa, Bulgaria, Sicily, Istanbul, and beyond. While working and traveling, he developed a passion for history and the mystery of the origins of mankind. He studied ancient myths and traditions and their similarities across different peoples, comparing them with the latest archaeological and geological observations. In 1919, he wrote a book about the origins of man entitled Adam l'homme tertiaire, Adam the third man, and later Les origines préhistoriques de l'écriture, The prehistoric origins of writing. He also wrote historical novels about Lyon and Provence Gallo-Roman archaeology. He filled multiple notebooks with notes and sketches which we have preserved to this day. He could effortlessly switch from an archaeological study to a technical report or an article for La Parfumerie Moderne and sometimes even developed his own photos and movies. Open-minded by nature, his drive to understand both science and philosophy was boundless, and he wished, above all, to use science to conduct innovative research that would benefit the whole of humanity. In 1950, while visiting his younger brother, the botanist Jean Gatfossé in Morocco, René Maurice died suddenly from a pulmonary embolism. Following René Maurice Gatfossé's death, Henri Marcel, who was René Maurice's son and my grandfather, took over the presidency of the company and decided to focus its activities on the cosmetics and ph pharmaceutical industries. While he shared the conviction that essential oils had numerous therapeutic benefits, he decided to steer the company in the direction of oleochemicals and plant extracts. Henri Marcel stopped the essential oil business, but maintained partnerships with the Faculty of Medicine in Lyon and Professor Gatté, a reputed dermatologist. This year, 2020, Gatfossé is celebrating its 140th anniversary. It is still owned by our family and is run by my father, Jacques Moiron. As you can imagine, like her grandfather and father before, Sophie is fascinated by the properties and potential of essential oils. She strongly believes that these compounds have an exploited therapeutic power. In 2008, the decision was taken to establish a foundation that could pursue the philanthropic vision of the founders of the Gatfossé company, particularly René Maurice Gatfossé. Sophie is the president of this foundation, which is dedicated to serving the greater good and operates independently from the Gatfusé company. The Gatfusé foundation's main mission is to encourage aromatherapy as a complementary therapeutic approach to conventional allopathic medicine. Paying tribute to René Maurice, the Gatfusé Foundation works to raise awareness about the scientific principles of clinical aromatherapy and promotes the healthcare establishments and medical teams 
that demonstrate the benefits of essential oils on human health. The Gatfse Foundation helps to improve the quality of life of patients in hospitals by supporting scientific aromatherapy practices performed by medical teams. Our number one mission is to acknowledge the achievements of the medical institutions that are using aromatherapy based on a sound scientific approach as a complementary treatment to improve treatment outcomes and patient care. We have already awarded six French establishments with a prize and in 2020, one Belgian institution. Our second mission is to support medical teams in French hospitals who wish to implement aromatherapy, continuous employee training in aromatherapy and related clinical research projects. Our third mission is to promote successful clinical applications of aromatherapy through communications and meetings. Today, we are very pleased to announce that the GATFC Foundation is expanding its program of recognition to the entire world via a new international prize worth 10,000 euros, which will be awarded to an aromatherapy clinical team using scientific aromatherapy as a complementary treatment in a health facility. Applicants must present clinical evidence to demonstrate the direct benefits enjoyed by the patient in relation to their treatment outcomes and or well-being. Please consult the application form available in the virtual lobby of Botanica. Click on our foundation logo to access it. To evaluate your eligibility and contact Delphine for any further questions. Our international judging panel is made of four independent experts in clinical aromatherapy. This map shows the last 20 awarded establishments who have received our support both by receiving the prize or a grant. In these pictures, you can see some of the medical teams supported by the foundation. In 2018, we have awarded Dr. Anne Moreau with the Gatfse Foundation Prize for her amazing work as a surgeon in Madagascar. And we are very pleased to have her present you her work right after this talk. We thank Rhiannon for inviting us to this Congress and we wish you a wonderful event. Rhiannon has set up a fantastic program, so make sure you stay connected. The Foundation will be present in the chat room today, so please do not hesitate to come and see us there. Sophie, Delphine and myself will be available and you can also reach us through our website. Thank you.